Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. <laughs> Tickling me this morning. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Filled with nothing but joy and hope about it, too. You know, it's a great thing to be able to wake up in the morning with, with peace in your heart and joy. Peace and joy is 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 immeasurable. It, it has a value attached to it, and, and I have no idea what it is. It's invaluable. It is worth so much more than than any amount of money you can make. Peace and joy. I I have not always had that. I have not always been a peaceful person, or or a person who lived his life um, in in a joyous spirit. It took an arrival at this moment. Some people arrive sooner than others. Um, I wish I had arrived at this point sooner. But I think it was necessary for me to learn a few things, too. That's, that's the amazing thing I've learned about life, is that instead of reflecting on your past uh, uh, incidences and calling them failures, instead of focusing on the negative and, and calling them bad times, um, I look at them now as experiences. I had to have those experiences that were negative, that were good, positive, wrong, evil. I had to have all those experiences to become, to shape who we are today. We all have to have them. If you look back at all the negative experiences you've had, all the things that you called failures, all the businesses I started that went under, all of the jobs I had that I was fired from, all the shows that were canceled, all of the times I I thought I was going to get something happening my way and turned out I didn't get it at all. When you look at all of it, all of it, hopefully along the way what you have done as a person is you've taken those negatives and those failures and you've used them for what they actually are. They are experiences. And they've now created in you an experienced person. And you know, uh, that is worth something. That's Then it becomes a positive. But what too many people do is they let the negative things that have happened in their life, they allow the failures that have happened in them lives never to manifest themselves as experiences. And you sit up there and you dwell on it and you dwell on it until you have this woe is me attitude. Stop looking at it like that, y'all. You go through things in order to become the person that you are today. I'll tell you who you sometimes have to sit down and talk to. Sometimes you ought to sit down to an inmate that really gets it. An inmate that says, man, I've actually heard inmates say it to me and write to me. and, and, And they've said things like, man, Coming to prison saved my life. Now, those of you who have never got how can he say a thing like that? But 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 some men know, man, I was so far out there that if I'd have stayed out there, I wouldn't even be here today. This actually allowed me to stop, spend some time with myself and learn some things about me. Now, does that happen for everybody like that? No. But here's a person who has taken an experience that could be considered a failure or a negative and turning it into a positive and using it to enrich their lives. You can do it no matter what your set of circumstances is. I recommend to everybody that you try changing your outlook in order to change your outcome. Everything that happens to you that's negative or you consider a failure, they're experiences. You've got to go through these things in order to have the knowledge that you have today. So I wish that I had come to this arrival that I'm in now, this place of peace and joy. But then guess what? I would not know what I know. I could not share some of the things that I'm able to share if I had not gone through some of them. And sometimes that's the purpose of them is to teach you a lesson because, you know, God has a plan for you. He really, really does. And eventually he can use you no matter how old you are. And he can use you no matter how young you are. If you just say, okay, I'm ready to hear your plan. I've tried mine. Mine ain't worked out. What's your plan for me, God? What do you want me to do? That's why I say every day, Steve Harvey got a radio show, y'all. Because, man, I ain't see it coming. I didn't see that coming. I ain't see this book coming. I ain't seen I ain't seen half of the amazing things that have happened to me. I didn't plan them. 
I was sitting there, man, asking God for some direction. And then I got smart enough to stay watchful, be a hard worker now, because faith without works is dead. And it came. And I'll remind you of this. God has given all of you a gift. Every last one of you listening has a gift. God has never created a soul that he did not provide a gift to. God gives everyone a gift. And a gift is not just singing, rapping, entertainment. The richer gifts are much more than that. Teachers are gifted people who really have the gift of sharing information. That's a gift. You know, um, and in that you can become great. You know, uh, a lot of people think that successful and greatness is the same thing. Cornell West said it at my daughter's graduation. He was a spokesperson. He said something so pointed. He said, don't ever confuse success with greatness. The two have nothing to do with each other. See, people determine success about money and fame and all this here. But greatness, greatness ain't got nothing to do with your money. It ain't got nothing to do with your fame. It's how you conduct your life. It's how meaningful and significant you become in your community, at your church, on your job, to the Cub Scout unit that you run, to the little girls' lives that you change, that that little center in the hood where you just one place of hope to so many people and they come back. And I use the example of Lou Dazzler who passed away in LA, who had the Boys and Girls Challenges Club out in LA. And he wasn't a rich man at all. And if you walk by him, you wouldn't even know who he was. But if you look at all the people who have gone on to become politicians, who have gone on to become CEOs, who have gone on to become athletes that have passed through this man's small building in the hood in L.A., he was great. Trust me, man, prayer changes things. I say it all the time. But when you see people become successful or great, there's somebody praying somewhere. May not even be them. Maybe it's their mama. You know, I think of Tiger Woods and all the greatness he's accomplished. You know, they, they always talk about his father and all this here. Somebody somewhere praying for Tiger Woods. I got cash money riding on that. Tiger Woods' mama is a praying woman or something. My mother was. She prayed me into this place because she used to call me all the time praying for you, boy. And prayer changes things. It really does. Try it today. It can change you. It has changed millions of people. Open up yourself to the greatness that's in you because God has given you a gift. Now, the fact that you ain't using it, who fault you think that is? I'm just telling you you got one. And if you start praying about it, it'll manifest itself. And you can become one or two things, successful or great, or both. You can make the decision today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Uh, It's Monday morning. It's the beginning of a new week. But it's the same damn thing up in here. (gasps) We finna turn up this volume, create this ignorance, and be bout it, bout it. (laughs) Bout it, bout it. Doggone it, Shirley Strawberry. We lit, Steve. We lit. Oh, that sound. Oh, that do- Shirley, that ain't you. Oh, that ain't That's you. That's why I said it. One more time, Shirley. We lit, Steve. We lit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you about that. Man, we lit. Oh, that what? was fun. That was fun. I have to say that was fun. It's young people listening to this show going, uh-uh. We lit, baby. Uh-uh. We lit. Woo. Uh-uh. And they probably ain't even saying that no more. They say it. They still say it. They still still saying we lit. Yeah, they still say it. Mm. I'm scared to use modern day slang. I'm still going. I'm still doing, you know, what's happening. (laughs) What up, player? You know, that way I know. Mm -hmm. I know it's out of style, and all my talk is out of style. (laughs) (laughs) We lit. (laughs) Carla Pharrell. What's happening? We bought that life. What's going on, yeah. Junior, you got one? Uh-uh. I'm just going to say morning, huh? <laughs> Stay in my lane. Tommy, you got one? Lit, light, lit. I'm living my best life. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do this one still work? Turn up. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. one still work? Still Ready for mine? Work. Uh-huh. Okay, come, come on, on, Steve. What it is. <laughs> there it is. What it is, What it y'all. is. That works. What's happening? What's good? What's good? Yeah. That's another right. yeah, what's really Everybody good. Everybody yeah. cool? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. My yeah, man. We live. Yeah. My man. What? Slapping five. <laughs> what is, what is <laughs> lit? Yeah, dig that. Dig that. Dig that, Sound like that, your 80s man. saying lit. 
You may as well throw a right on in there, Steve. Right you on. I well. still say right on, man. Right on. I still say, hey, man. When I talk to my older brother, uh-huh. it's 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 like talking to Marvin Gaye. In the seventies, seriously, what man. Bro, I'm talking to Shaq. Hey, what's up, bro? What's happening with what's you, man? Right? What's up, man? That's Give me some of that long. skin, man. Oh. Give me some skin, dog. <laughs> That's five on the black hand side. You know what I'm I'll keep it like that. That's all right, man. Right on. What's been going on with you, player? You still doing it, ain't you? You know pimping ain't easy, but somebody yeah, got to do cliche. it, and it might yeah. as well be me. <laughs> hey, dog. Yeah, what's up? What's up, Tommy? One of my little girls, one of her friends at the house said, Mr. Tommy, you lit. I said, baby. I said, baby, I don't, I don't, I don't smoke weed. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you offended. Now. She's yeah. looking at you and, and like. Get out my house. <laughs> you said what? Yeah, she's looking at yeah. you like. That you know, could like... be a drunk reference. <laughs> oh, oh God. God. Either way, I wasn't there. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know what lit meant. <laughs> yeah, especially in front of your kids. Friend. I know, but Man. you got to stay fresh and hip, Tommy. You, we got younger kids too. You, you know, I'm you be trying. Hey, 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 hey. Let me tell you what I did one day in Atlanta. I came out my office with my shirt open. And my kid's friends was in the house. Uh Uh-oh. Went to say, Dad, your shirt is open. I said, I live here. (laughs) (laughs) Tell all your little flat stomach-ass friends to turn around and quit looking over here. But it's so funny, Steve. You're right, because we're at an age now where everything we do embarrasses our kids. Yeah. There's nothing that we can do where our kids think we're cool. Nothing. All right, listen, coming up at 32 after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. We lit! We lit! (laughs) Turn up! (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got now? The shoplifter. (laughs) Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Uh, Yes, I'm trying to reach a Tanya, please. This is she. Hi, Tanya. Uh, My name is Daniel... I'm the head of store security here at your job. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm trying to see. Um, I'm gonna have to. I know today's your day off. I'm looking at the schedule here. It seems that you don't come back in until Saturday. Um, I'm trying to see if it's possible I can get you to come to the store. There's a bit of a situation I want to discuss with you. There's about eighteen hundred dollars worth of merchandise missing from the store. What? And- yeah, it's about eighteen hundred dollars worth of merchandise, and we definitely know that this is a in-house situation. This is not someone walking in shoplifting. This is definitely a um, an in-house situation uh, with employees who have evidently been shoplifting from the store, taking things. And we want to get down to the uh, to the roots of the problem. Okay, uh, so what you calling me for? Well, ma'am, it's uh, it's been brought to my attention that there's a possibility that you may be. Uh, yeah. Uh, part of this situation and part of the situation i ain't no thief i don't steal you don't call my house accusing me of stealing i ain't stole nothing from no body okay well my hang on man what i'm trying to do is just trying to to hang on my you trying to say i done stole something and i ain't stole the thing okay wait just a second now here, do you have a sister named cynthia yeah what about her well now it seems that well here on some of the footage that we have on camera that uh, it's a possibility that it seems like your sister's actually wearing some of the merchandise that we sell here in the store. And okay, just because she wears something that we sell in the store don't mean that I stole it. Well, we don't see where she's at. I've, I've, I've backed the footage up as far as I could. I don't see any footage of where she purchased this particular merchandise. And my assumption is maybe you gave it to her. I ain't gave her sh- and just because you don't see where somebody purchased it don't mean that it's been stolen. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just get to the chase of this, Tanya. What I'm going to have to do is this. If I can't get you to come to the store, ma'am, and matter of fact, here's another question for you before I go any further. you have children at all, Tanya? Yeah, I got children. Why? Do you? Is it possible? Because uh, I'm missing a lot of baby merchandise as well. And You know what? You know what? You really cruising. For this morning, okay? Because well, you don't call somebody on their off day accusing them of stealing. Okay, here's what I got to do. Uh, uh, are you coming into the office so I can talk with you? I'm not coming no where on my off day. Well, then what's going to happen, Miss Tanya, is I'm going to have to actually come to your home, check your closet. I'm going to have to check your kids and see you if they're do what? check and see if they're wearing merchandise that that you comes from this. Come to my house if you want to, and they're going to take your 
up out of here in the body bag. Excuse me? me? You heard what I said. You heard what I said. You don't call nobody. I bust my ass at that store. I bust my ass at that store. You understand me? I work hard for y'all, okay? You, you've been busting. You've been busting. You call here accusing me of stealing. I ain't stole shit from nobody. You, I don't have to steal. That's why I work all day. You understand me? I think you've been busting your butt taking day. stuff is what you've been doing. You've I been took from nobody. You understand me? I do not steal. I'm going to come over there. Of I'm checking I'm your closets. Things, but it ain't no thief. You understand And me? I'm checking your babies as well. And I'm making. You check my babies and see what happens. You put your hands on any damn thing in here and see what happens. Okay? I don't want to have to drag you your come butt. Over here. Drag? Oh, you're going to drag somebody? Oh, now you threatening me? I don't want to drag you out of your house. Security guard. You're a tough security guard. You like your job that much? You willing to die for that? Huh? Who said anything about me dying? I did. Come over here, and that's what's going to happen. That's what happens. When you f*** with people on their off day, you get hurt, okay? I get a couple of damn days off, and y'all going to call me with this b****. So are you threatening me now? I'm threatening you. Didn't you just call and say you was coming over here? Yes, Bring I did. Bring your over here. Bring your I, I'm, don't, Bring your security guard. I'm Bring on my Don't Look, let me Bring tell you something. Okay? I can have you. I can have you brought up on charges. You know that. Bring me up on charges and see what happens. That's Bring it. Bring me up on charges. See if you get that far. I'm on my way over there now to check you and your kids. You understand me? Come over here to check me and my kids and see how they check your ass up out of here. Let me tell you something. I, you I, ain't got to tell me. You ain't got nothing to tell me. You ain't look, got look, nothing look, look. else you, to tell why, me. Okay. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and tell me what you took? Maybe I'll go light on you. I'll go light you on. You think I'm stupid or something? You sound like a damn fool. Why don't you tell me what you took? I ain't took I bet you're teaching your little kids over there how to steal, too, aren't you? What? What you teach your little ugly kids? Hey, 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 hey. Now, you will hey, not. Hey, 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 my ass. Hey, don't call me with this bull on my off day. Let me tell you one more th Are you listening to me? I got one more oh, thing to say to you. You ain't got nothing else to say to me. Are you listening? What? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked from oh. your sister Cynthia. Oh, okay, okay. So you and that bro want to play games, okay? Y'all want to play, right? Y'all got jokes. Y'all got jokes. I got a joke for both of y'all, okay? I'm around here taking care of her and all her little ugly <laughs> kids, and she going to play with me and my off day. Hey, All right. Tell you, she All told right. me. She told me. She said, uh, "That Tommy be be pranking people. You can't nobody get me with that old crazy stuff. How come them people don't know somebody calling and tripping with this?" She told me you couldn't. You thought you couldn't be God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all right. Y'all got me. Y'all got me. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Well, I love you. I love you, nephew Tommy. <laughs> I got something bug like. <laughs> All right, let me ask you one more thing. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shoplifters. That goes out to all the shoplifters out there. How's that? That's cool. Frank Carl. <laughs> they get shout outs and yeah, dedications. They get shout outs and dedications. <laughs> all, you, all you shoplifters out there that's going to get sooner or later going to get called. This goes out to you all, okay? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and there it is. There you have it. Columbia, South Carolina, Friday, July 1st. Township Auditorium, Columbia, South Carolina. Until then, I will lay dormant with my stupid and then I'll rise again. Stupid at his best. Ooh. Yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we go. Uh, as promised, this is, uh, <laughs> this is for the ladies. We want to help you. Get your get you to get your man to open up because you know they don't like to talk about stuff. No, they don't. You know, they don't. yeah, they, they don't like, like to, to talk about their feelings, feelings and all that. And mm -hmm. women, as women, we love that. Yes, so, we do. Yeah. So this is how to get your man to talk about his feelings. And Steve, please see if you agree with this. Guys, see if you agree with this um, because they're not known to do this. So ladies, if you're tired of guessing how your man feels, here are some pointers for you to get your guy to share. All right, Steve, let's see if you agree. Be trustworthy. How about that? For a guy to open Hell up. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Us, we stop right there. I'm sorry. I didn't even oh, hardly oh, get I, it I'm up. I'm not understanding what you say. For if a guy you want to... your man to op open up, what? Okay, yes. Okay, so if you want your guy to open up and share his emotions with you, he's got to be able to trust you. 
Okay, the he's woman. got it. That's yeah, what he's... it means, Tommy. Okay, I got it. Didn't yeah. ask you to be <laughs> Yeah, you didn't even yeah. let me get it yeah. out, Tommy. <laughs> Anything with the word Once trust. Once I hear the word trust, trust I'm yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, treat him as an equal, okay? So he, he's your partner. He's your husband. He's your man. You know, mm-hmm. he's your boo, whatever. So don't yeah, treat I mean, him like know, a child. I had that. No, nah, I ain't had that before. What do you mean? Okay. You know, treat you like an equal. Uh, what happened mm-hmm. before? I'm just saying. I ain't saying who it was. I'm just saying. We didn't say who. <laughs> you, yeah. You being treated before. equal now. I'm being yeah, treated I'm, like I a child now. Equal now, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been, I've been, I've, I've actually been a slave. Oh. <laughs> by really, your, Steve? By your woman? By a slave? <laughs> I mean, you know, if that's the game you're playing, that was that the game you were playing or something? You know how people roll, yeah. do role role reversal. Uh huh. No, it wasn't no game. He was a slave. <laughs> Really I was, right? no, it was not. Give me my shoes. <laughs> what are you talking about, role reverse? No, no, no. You know no, how no. you role play no, with really your mate? Playing. You role play. You whisper yeah. when you talk. Yeah, yeah. The whole time. Talking low the yeah. whole time. You ever yeah. had <laughs> Never <laughs> made eye contact. You ever been in such a bad relationship that they be sleep on your arm mm-hmm. in the morning mm-hmm. and you have mm-hmm. a decision to make? Mm-hmm. Do I run the risk of pulling my arm out and waking her up? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Or do I just chew it off? <laughs> That's, That's your That's decision. Coyote yeah. That's coyote yeah. love. Don't, don't, don't wake up. Let me tell you something, man. I, I damn near, I damn near had got it off, but I started crying. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I had bit, bitten into my shoulder. That blood was everywhere. She woke up with blood all around in my mouth. She, what are you doing? I was chewing my arm. Trying to chew my arm. <laughs> wow. So, so, what this, you don't want to wake her up. so this wouldn't happen. Yeah. But uh, she heard me whimpering. <laughs> wow, Steve. What are you doing, boo? Yeah. <laughs> what are you crying? Why is there blood on your mouth? I'm trying to eat my arm off. your ass up, which obviously I didn't do. There's blood everywhere on these sheets. You didn't mess these sheets up. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm hey. Sorry. Oh. I, was, I was just trying to leave your ass sleep is what I was trying to do. My bad. Oh, God. Well, let me go on yeah. down to the hospital and get these 85 stitches put in my shoulder. Hey, come on back. Put a little Self bit of inflicted. meat back on it. I had, I had most of the meat in my mouth, so they was able to pack it back on and restructure my shoulder. Wow. Go ahead. What's All next, right. You know? Uh, you know, like compliment when, him when he does something well. That's a good way to she get him to open that. up. Like, rem- yeah, like, you know, compliment of the things he does well, you know, in case he's self conscious or something. You know, oh, honey, I like the mm-hmm. way you did this, or, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever. That's you know, all you're going to do? <laughs> That's huh? what you've heard. <laughs> yeah. That's what I get. That's what you get, too, Tommy? <laughs> Who told you to put that on? <laughs> Told me one time, you got on four different blacks. Them blacks, right? That's four different blacks you got on. Them pants wow. gonna go with that jacket, that shirt. That's four different blacks. Yeah, well, that's ugly. That's the risk. But go on and wear it if that's what you want to do. T-shirts around here. Where you going? <laughs> yeah. That's what you get, Jay. Jay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, you just gonna put on a clean T-shirt now? Out the blue. <laughs> Yeah, change of behavior. Yeah. What's the next one, Cheryl? <laughs> All right. Uh, you got to pick the right time, okay? Don't start asking him about his feelings when he's rushed or when he's distracted ah. or watching a game and stuff like that. You got to ease into it, ladies. Mm-hmm. Ease Instead into Instead of this it. right here. So you just going to sit there and ain't going to talk to me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm watching the damn game. Oh, the game is more important, it's more important than me? Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. 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 Right now. yes. Right now. It is. Really. Bef- you before you go to work, now? we need to talk. Yeah. yeah. This game is pretty big. They only going to play this once a year. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Did you actually tomorrow. say those words? Yeah. To you say? <laughs> you don't say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. But they're getting said. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, here's another one. Watch your approach, how you approach it. Don't just push it down his throat, you know? Hello. Yeah, be That's gentle. Cool. Be non judgmental. Yeah, you know, you want him to open up. You don't want him to run away from yep. the conversation. Because you sure don't want to put that down your throat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want it down your throat. Don't yeah. push it down our throat. Right. Hello. <laughs> 
And watch your body language, ladies. We're yeah. just moving on. We're just moving on. <laughs> Please watch, do. Yes, watch your body language. Watch you know, your body language. Yeah, keep yourself cool. Yeah, keep your, just, you know, don't forget you're trying to make him feel safe and not judged. Okay? So, you know, be cool about it. Okay. You know, be Memories sexy with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm learning something, you, Shirley. Uh, it's good. You got that one, Steve? You cool with that one? Watch your body language? Watch your body language. Uh Do you hear me talking to you? (laughs) Yeah. Mm. Is that neck moving? Yeah. Turn Uh the way around. I hear everything Mm. you're saying. Sitting over there with your arms folded. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you got to be cool about it, ladies, if you want to get him to open up. You want him to open up, but you cross your legs. (laughs) (laughs) And your arm folded. Hand folded, John. That's ugly. This is an ugly conversation. When they legs are crossed and arms folded. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you, you should have. These ain't good advices. If, if you want a they man to open up, come talk to me naked. I will be wide open as soon as you walk in the door talking to me naked. Can I talk to you for a minute? Hell yeah. What's up? <laughs> Not Unless it's a game you really want. You pick now to be naked. Seriously. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right now. Every time to be naked. <laughs> yeah, he does. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, time now for Ask the CLO, your favorite segment. The chief love officer is in the building. Please submit your questions to steveharveyfm.com. This is one uh, question from Sharon out of Kentucky, Steve. She says, I'm a single mother, and earlier this year, I moved out of state and took my 11-year-old daughter with me. My daughter has had a hard time adjusting, and now she tells me that she hates me. I found out that she's been texting her dad saying I'm verbally abusive, and she needs to come live with him. I can't get my ex-husband to see that she's being manipulative. He is a great dad, but I know he's not ready to be a single dad. How can I get my daughter to stop lying and acting out? Wow. Well, this uh, I don't know who to have an answer that I can give you that uh, keep me out of court. Yeah, radio friendly. (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying to find the radio friendly, so I guess I could say counseling. That's, okay. that's it? That's an answer? <laughs> See, um... Uh, no, you're you right, say with that, um, <laughs> I could yeah, stop man. all this lying at my house. <laughs> but you, you don't, you're not going to do that. So, counseling. Yeah. Next question. All right, here we go. Dante <laughs> in Raleigh, North Carolina says, I'm a young, hardworking, single guy, and I live outside the city, so I shop at a small, family-owned store that's close to my house. The store is run by three middle-aged sisters that look like <laughs> that look like trolls. Oh Dang. my god! The god. three old nice. women make shopping a living hell for me. They say the most inappropriate things to me and treat me like a piece of meat. I don't want to mm. be rude, so I've been trying to ignore them. I would feel funny reporting them to their dad. How can I get them to leave me alone? Now, where he say he lives, Shirley? He's in Raleigh, North Carolina, Steve. Drive to a Walmart. Uh-huh. He's outside of Raleigh. That's what he's. Well, I don't close. care. You Stop get this Walmart the... is close by. Yeah. <laughs> get Stop your ass to a Walmart. Home. I'm not going in here to take abuse from ugly people. I'm not going to do it. That's, that's, that's what I'm line. not going to do. Yeah, I draw the line right here. If you're Trolls. cute, you can talk to me bad sometimes. <laughs> but if you're a little troll looking ass, you can't say not a damn thing to me because it come across different. You know, it ain't even funny. You know, when cute people mess yeah. with you, you go, oh, that's the you, girl. You know, a little yeah. ugly person say something to you, damn. <laughs> that's it. That's you know, you keep that you? look on your face like, yeah. All right, hey, man, just drive to Walmart. You in Raleigh. I know you live outside Raleigh. You're trying to support local business, but you ain't got to. <laughs> Your advice Ugly is people have ugly attitudes. <laughs> just leave them alone. Rude now. Yeah, they do. That's true. I've seen man. that before. So, Steve, this one's from Kirby in New Jersey. Kirby says, my husband and I are very active in our church, and our social life was mostly events at church. I stopped going to church when I found out my husband had an affair with the church secretary, and everyone knew it but me. My husband confessed and broke down and cried. I told him he needs to get in front of the congregation and apologize to me. Uh, church will reopen next Sunday, and he said he will not do that. Uh, he's willing uh, to throw away 23 years of marriage instead. Hmm, should I just let him go? Kirby, well, wow. see, Good. sister, 
I don't I don't know how the public apology in front of the church is going to make you feel any better, be any less hurt or be even more forgiving. I don't know what it is uh, about that that would make it do. Now, I think what you're trying to do is because you think everybody knew and they didn't. Some people knew, but when the story got out, girl, I saw him over there and I said, mm. you know, you're hearing a lot of that. And a lot of the church members that found out you found out acted like they was in the know. Suspicion and know is two different things. So I think it's, it doesn't make any sense for you to ask him to do that. He's not trying to, throwing it away was the affair. He broke down and cried. He said, I'm sorry. Now, you want him to publicly apologize to you. And he said he's not going to do that. Who goes to church to stand up in front of the church to apologize? That's not what church is for. Church is a place for forgiveness. You don't go to church to confess. Now, unless y'all Catholic and y'all got a booth up at the front and they have confession, didn't do that. That's to the priest only, too. It's not right, true. but ain't nobody got yeah. it where you got to go stand up in front of everybody. Hey, you don't know what's going on at that church. Half your church probably need to stand up and yeah. say, I'm or- sorry to somebody about something. Mm-hmm. Matter she- of fact, all of them. And Steve, she never even said how she found out. So you're right. Maybe everybody at the church doesn't know like she thinks they do. And she if never they said do, so what? How mm-hmm. is that going to make you better, see? Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. don't you see how, how, what that does for you. You know how long that line will be if that was a Baptist booth? You know how long Ooh, this line will yeah. be? No. <laughs> Any, yeah, we all if sin the Baptist fall short. Yeah. So do you know how long yeah, I have to stay uh-huh. in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it was a Sir, Baptist booth. A Baptist booth? <laughs> Sir, how long are you in here with it? <laughs> Mr. Hart. <laughs> Mr. Hart, what is you in there saying? Why are you crying again? <laughs> again? <laughs> If it was a Baptist booth. A Baptist booth. I like that. Uh, I like that. Instead of, I'll, I'll forgive you, uh, give you pentas for your sins. You'll be here. Man, what? <laughs> <laughs> man, you lying. God, dog, man, I can't help you with that there, buddy. <laughs> No, Steve, they do in church, you know, like if you've done something like, say, this man has done and, and, and the pastor found out, they will sit you down. If you have a prominent position in the church, they will do what's called sit yeah, you down. Yeah, he ain't got that. She was yeah. the church secretary. He right. ain't got no position. Right. <laughs> she never said she any just, of that, so yeah. Yeah. So she wants She's to know just she should They're real house. active, though. He's something in the church. Mm-hmm. they real active. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was more active. Very, <laughs> very active. Yeah. You know All right, thank you for your CLO questions. Thank you, CLO. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Truth be told. Come on, Junior. Truth be told. I don't know who these people are and where they come from, but on Saturday, yeah. why is you calling any human being before 8 o'clock? <laughs> why? <laughs> who the hell? What do we have to talk about <laughs> at 7.15 a.m.? Oh. There's nothing I want to talk like. My boy called me at 7 p.m. talking about what you doing. Dog is sad. I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm trying day. to do. But here's the thing about it is, like he said, dog, did you see? I, was, I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> it's 7 15. I love it. Dog, these people need to go. I'm telling you, just go jump off and dress it. The phone shouldn't even be allowed <laughs> to work but, before until after 8. After 10. It, it won't even ring. You shouldn't. But I'm just, I'm just saying, what made you get up? Pick your phone up and say, damn it, you know who I ain't called? <laughs> Let me call him right now. For what? Junior. At what time, Junior? At 7 15. First of all, I ain't formulated a thought. Okay, and then you another grown man talking to another grown man as I lay in bed. This ain't really, this is not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. When you heard me say, hello, hello, you go on the phone. Dog, guess what? What? <laughs> What at 15? What? Why am I guessing? Why are you answering? Y'all ain't got no shirt on right now. Why you want to wake up and guess? Y'all I ain't got no shirt on. You sleep naked? Yo, what? Shirt? I'm just asking. I, however I sleep, it ain't none of your business at 15. I'm just something I'm comfortable with the conversation. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Y'all okay. should just 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 find something else to don't call people no more. Okay. That's all okay. I just want to say. What's the earliest you can take a call? 10.30. 10.30. <laughs> 7.15 on the set. Yeah, 10.30.
I want to get up, have my coffee, uh-huh. enjoy my morning. Uh-huh. But, dog, you uh-huh. call me at 715, I ain't got no shirt on. You talk about guess what? <laughs> this, what? This is uncomfortable, huh? It's uncomfortable. <laughs> you laying horizontal right. talking to another man. <laughs> uh, at 715? That don't even feel right. At 715. Right. <laughs> dog, I got, dog I, got, I got one leg in the bed, one leg out the bed. Guess what? That's all I want to say. Just stop uh-huh. calling right. me. Truth be told. Okay. Okay. 1030. 1030. <laughs> Yeah, 10.30. I wish you were early. Yeah, we should really call him. Yeah. On Saturday. Don't on call Saturday. him. He'll be upset. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. And the person I'm talking about is Jay. <laughs> Just want wow. y'all to know. Oh, it's you, Jay? Wow. You know what? Just want you y'all to know. I thought we agreed not to bring that up. <laughs> that we agreed to agree. The same time we agree, agreed that you would not. Both of y'all. Both of y'all. Let me tell you something. What's Steve? Come on. I Tommy, mean, I think you agree with me. <laughs> Both of y'all. Both of y'all sick ass need some women in your life. <laughs> y'all, good, man. y'all need some y'all ladies. Need something man. to do. Y'all ain't got nothing to do. Y'all waking up by y'all, Sam. Put your oh, shirt on, Junior. <laughs> Why is y'all he on the phone? Each other. Y'all issues ain't even real issues. Y'all call me the 1015, Jay. <laughs> I mean, I uh, thought we agreed not to talk about this. Damn. Uh, all right. Uh-huh. Thank you, Junior. Yeah, that's we all. get it now. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Uh, it's time now for Comedy Roulette. Jay, please quickly it's so set easy. this up. It's so easy to explain this. You test our comedy ability mm-hmm. every week. Yeah. Tell you what you do. Take five subjects, put them on the wheel, spin the wheel around, mm-hmm. wherever it stop. I'll show you how good we are. We take from there. All right. Let's put go. Put five the up wheel. there. Put five up there. All right, here we go. Uh, here are the subjects. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, the Deltas ain't all that. No, they ain't. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, How'd that get on there? Right there. <laughs> Jay, how'd that get on he there? Just, just read what's there. Read it. I love some Deltas now, Jay. Number two, your car smells funny. That's a good one. That's yeah. a very good oh, one. Man. That's a good one. Yeah, number yeah. number like three, that. you try to act like you don't know nobody. All right, all right. Uh-huh. I don't know how people like that. <laughs> number, <laughs> number four, uh, people who let their new positions go to their head. Oh, that's a real good one there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, and then number five, sky cap. Spin the wheel, put them up. Yeah. Spin the wheel. Let's go, cat. Sky cap. Spin it. Give me that. Come on, come on, sky cap. Come on, sky cap. All that. Sky cap. Sky cap. Oh, what? What'd number you four, people who let their new positions go to their heads. Can I have this? Go ahead, let me Jay. start oh, this thing go. off right uh-huh. here. Come on. Man. You know the people who get just a little small ass name tag uh-huh. on they dough. Uh-huh. They ain't never had one. Yeah. Now all of a sudden they betting you. Yeah. Just because they yeah. got a name tag. <laughs> they yeah. get a little two cent raise. Two damn <laughs> cents. <laughs> <laughs> no, not 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 vernacularly speaking. That's all they got well, for t- two t- damn cents. Per check. Per check. That's yeah. it. How about that? Look yeah. at that. What yeah. you making? What you making now, huh? I got two cents more than you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll get... tell you what that kind of under about the new position. <laughs> when it go to their head, uh-huh. I used to work in fast food, right? Uh-huh. Me and my partner on fries. All of a sudden, somebody got called in sick. Uh-huh. Now he get to wear the headset. <laughs> now he talking crazy to <laughs> you know, fry. Now he ain't part of the crew no more. Yeah. Hey, I said I need your fries up now. Now he talking ugly yeah. to you. He ain't talking ugly to everybody because he got the headset on because the boss that called in sick. This your first day with it. He don't even know how to control it. He sit, he hit May I take your order? But he coming on the intercom in the back when he's going to press the other button to go out to the order. I'm just saying. He just a new with his what head. What you got, Tommy? What you got, man? I know good and Doggone well, you ain't posting on Facebook that you the lead vacuum cleaner operator at the plant. Really? And now you got your picture on there with the vacuum cleaner? Really? Yeah. Really, dog? Yeah, dog. Yeah. Uh, what you got, Steve? Yeah, man, that's how they do it. <laughs> People who let their new positions go to their head. I just have two words for this one. Uh-huh. Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, cut up. <laughs> uh-huh. Let's see what the hell he want to do. Man. Oh, man, he's back in the pool. He letting his new job go straight to his oh, head. Yeah. I, got a, I got a partner of mine in the joint, right? 
So I go uh-huh. to see him. He work in the, in the furniture department, right? Now, the people in the furniture department make three cents an hour. The other workers make two cents an hour. Yeah. Do you know that the three centers talk trash to the two centers? <laughs> like, wow. How much money you making? Two cents an hour? You ain't making no money. When you start to make some cash, talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, man. That's how that new position go to their head, Let man. it go right to their head. Let it go right to their head. <laughs> and, uh, you know what, it, what I can't understand, though, man, is that when you do get a new position, uh, how come everybody else got to call you by your last name? <laughs> like, you just was, on, you was you, you was Charles yesterday. <laughs> that you expect us to call you Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> oh, we got to call you Mr. Jenkins? Yeah, not today. We got to call you Mr. Yeah, Jenkins. But right you there. was Charles yesterday. Mm-hmm. They just gave you a raise. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you ain't put a sign in front of your parking space at the job that say Larry Jenkins, lead bathroom attendant. I know you ain't done this. No, that's what happened. You ain't done this, Larry. How you? You the lead bathroom attendant? Really? No, that's what happened, man. Uh, it goes to their head. Oh, you got a new position, but you still getting a ride to work with me. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you don't even work, Jay. <laughs> well, I think you letting you. I think you letting your job go. To your head. Well, we'll be back. <laughs> Cheryl didn't let the job go to her head. She decided she don't want to talk right now. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, her family is ghetto, and she doesn't even know it. Mm, mm, mm. Right now, though, we'll get to it. Right now, the nephew is here <laughs> with today's prank phone call. What you got, Neff? <laughs> Go on, tell him what I got you. Go on, tell him. All right, well, this was my mom's favorite, okay? (laughs) My late mom. This was her favorite when she loved to hear this one. It's called um, Aqua Boogie, (laughs) right? Aqua Boogie, right? Aqua Boogie. Aqua Boogie Current, actually. Aqua Boogie Current. It is. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Quincy, please. This is. Hey, how are you? My name is Maurice. Maurice calling you from the power company. How you doing today? Uh, I'm all right. What's up? Well, listen, we're doing some testing in your neighborhood. We're trying to make sure we don't have to actually shut the power down out there. And uh, we're, we're calling around to uh, quite a few people in your neighborhood running some tests on individual homes and making sure the uh, electricity is running correctly. Um, can I get you to do a few things for me and see if that, and the, and, and the quicker we get through with this, sir, and it's possible we won't have to turn your power off at all. I know you don't want us to have to come out and turn power off and you got stuff in your refrigerator that can spoil and things like that so we want to try to get this done and hopefully the power with the with the test that we run it'll 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 run correctly and we won't have to do anything okay uh, i don't know nothing about no electricity though you know what i'm saying so no 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 i understand yeah. that don't worry about that all right uh here's what i need you to do now how big is your house what do you how many bedrooms you got four bedrooms four bedrooms now uh, you have upstairs downstairs it's too sore okay all right so here's what we need to do um if you can, it ain't gonna take long though, right? I got it because I'm in a hurry, man. I ain't gonna have a lot of time. No, no, no. This, 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 this won't take long at all, sir. Can okay. I get you to take your breaker and shut down everything upstairs? And we're gonna run a test on the stuff downstairs right now. It'll be real quick. All right. Just shut, just shut everything off. I want you to keep the downstairs open and keep that so we can, so we can run our test on this thing. All right. Everything's shut. Everything's down. Okay, you you turned off Everything. upstairs. I just turned off all the switches. Okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to uh, turn on your television and then turn it off. Downstairs? Downstairs. How many TVs you got downstairs? I got two TVs downstairs. Let's turn them both on. Hang on. Just turn them on? Yeah, just turn them on. You got them on? I got one on. Hang on. Let's try to turn that other one on. All right, they both on. Okay, now you got a microwave in your kitchen? Yeah, I got a microwave. Okay, turn that on. It's already on, man. I can see the lights on. It's got the clock on it. That's got that double Atron thing that's going through there. It's a whole different type of current. I just want to make I don't know nothing about what you're talking about, but I got to get to work, man. So the microwave's on. It's running. No, no, no. I want you to actually turn it on. I want you to actually push like a minute or two on that thing. What's that got to do with anything, man? Come on now. I mean, what I got to do? No, this is a test, sir. What I don't want to have to do is come out there and turn your power off. And I don't want to do that. You got a lot of food in your fridge, I'm sure, right? All right. All right. Hey, look, it's on. Microwave's on. TV's on. Okay. Now, open your refrigerator. Work, man. The electricity works downstairs. 
Okay, but listen, now, I know, but what we got to do is we got to make sure that this stuff isn't overpowered. Now, can you open your refrigerator? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, man. Do you see the uh, button that, that uh, actually has, I mean, well, you can turn, the, you can push it and the light will go out, you know what I'm talking about? Come on, man. You ain't got nobody to just be able to check something outside, man. I mean, I'm in the fridge. I, I understand, but push that button five times for me and see what it does. The, the what, the, the light button? Yeah, push that light button five times. Come on, man. All right, does it, did it go off and on every yeah, time? Yeah, it's did off it? and on, man. There's, 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 ain't nothing wrong with the refrigerator. The refrigerator's plugged in, man. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to do. Right there, if you're in the kitchen, turn your sink on for me. Turn the sink on? What they got to do with electricity, man? Well, see, that's a nitro current. That's a nitro current. You wouldn't understand that, but I need you to turn that on for me, too. Just turn it on full blast. Got it on? I got it on. Okay, now go in your master bedroom. I can turn it off? No, let that water run. Go in your master bedroom and go in the bath for me. I appreciate you helping me out on this. Man, Quincy. come on, man. Quincy, I appreciate you. I'm in you a hurry. Me. I mean, everything, it's, everything's working. I'm in, the, I'm in the bath. What's up? Okay, flush that toilet for me, Quincy. Say what? Flush that toilet for me. Flush the toilet? Yeah, flush that toilet. Man, it ain't even back. electrical. What it is, it's an it's a, it's a aqua boogie. Man, look, you need to get somebody. I'm okay. I'm gonna flush the toilet. It ain't no electrical plugs or nothing in this area, man. Right, I understand that. You don't see what it is. This is an aqua boogie current that flows through that water. F flush that thing for me one time. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, all right. Toilet works, man. You ain't got nobody in the area that could come out here and just check this shit out, man. Quincy, I'm trying my best not to come out and 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 and, and turn your power off. And I know you got somewhere to go. Why you turn my power off, man? You supposed to be making sure the power stay on. Right, I understand that. Now, do you have Quincy? Do you have a blender? Yeah, I got a blender, man. I got a blender. I got a TV. I got a refrigerator, and they all work. The toilet works. Everything works. All right. What I want you to do is get this blender, and we'll just throw you a few cues of eyes or something in there, and turn that thing on for me. Come on, man. We're almost done. I got to get to work, man. Just work with me, the Quincy. Blender. I appreciate it, man. This is just a blender. Come on, man. This is some bullshit. Yeah, that's that isometric current. Oh, you should be walking this house, man. Good. You need to check the next house. You don't have no problems with no smoothies or nothing in that thing, do you? You serious? Man, what the hell I got to do with anything, man? I got to get to work. You I understand. Said I understand. Listen. Like a minute, man. This shit going too far. Okay, have somebody okay. come out here or do this because I need to get to my job. And I, I, and I understand that. Job. But I, well, I could just call and have people go through the damn house playing scavenger hunt. I got to get to work. Okay, now listen, Quincy, one last thing. Are you able to shut that breaker, put that breaker back on, and then shut off downstairs and then go upstairs and check some stuff for me? Shut off what? Shut off the breaker downstairs. Go ahead and turn it I'm off. I'm not shutting off no breaker downstairs. I shut off the one upstairs. We didn't turn on every damn thing down here. You didn't have me. I got the blender. I didn't turn on the microwave, the refrigerator. Come on, man. Flushing the toilets and I got to get to work. Quincy, I need you to lose this attitude you got. I need you to get somebody down here to do this. My electricity in my house work. It work for you. Call me. The only thing ain't work is my ain't at work because I'm here doing this bull playing off and on. Get somebody in here. This work. Now don't piss me off and make me turn it all the way off. Piss you off. My work. And when I get back from work, my still should be on. I got one more thing I need to say to you, Quincy. It better be the last thing. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your sister, Gail. Gail better be in a witness protection program, man. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> let me turn this water off, man. You got to up. Hey, man, let me ask you something, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest, radio show in the land? <laughs> That's got to be the Steve Harvey morning show. <laughs> and Tommy, uh, you call me again, they going to be the show used to have Tommy on. <laughs> 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 that right there fairly goes to Miss Helen right there. Classic. Can I do that? that that's the Miss Helen. She loved that one. She really did. <laughs> okay, Why is okay, Tommy okay, okay. having okay. those people go all over the house doing all this stuff? Why is Not Tommy turn, doing turn, that turn. people? <laughs> <laughs> He's so crazy. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, coming up, Strawberry Letter. We'll get into it. Subject, her family is ghetto. She doesn't know it. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. It's for you, Jay. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. I ain't done that in a minute. Wow. Thank you, sir. (laughs) You're welcome. What do you mean you haven't done that? Well, well, you know, when, when like Steve is here, he don't let me introduce the letter no more. Yeah, like, yep. Shut up. I don't need yeah. all that. That's for yep. sure. You shut your ignorant ass up. I don't need Well, she you back got... and you did it. So can we do the letter now? You happy? Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> Be right. Got your little well, he intro hate in. He hate I did it, sir. Wow. <laughs> it's a lot going on. All right. Subject. He does not uh-huh. like me. He, he, my uncle does not like me. Mm. He loves you, though. He loves mm. you. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right, subject, her family is ghetto both and she y'all, doesn't know both it. Of y'all, both of y'all are correct. <laughs> what? He your oh, uncle he... and he do not like you. See that? But you he loves you. But yeah. he loves you. I do. All right. Yeah. Love you to death, boy. Ain't going to let nothing happen to you. Do okay. not particularly care for you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dear Stephen Shirley. <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, I grew up in a two-parent home, and both of my parents earned college degrees and worked hard to provide a good life for me and my siblings. And I have a college degree as well, and I've been married for over 20 years to a great woman, and we have two teenagers. My teenagers are well-mannered and really smart kids. So here's my problem. I met my wife in college and fell in love with her, but I cannot stand her family. They are, for lack of a better term, ghetto. I must admit that as my kids grew up, I limited their access to my wife's side of the family, but I had to be careful so I wouldn't offend my wife. These people are hood, and they have a cookout for every occasion. They all live on the same street in five or six mobile homes, so they always are down to party, play cards, drink, get all loud, and act a fool. These kids are always part, uh, uh, their kids are always part of the festivities. And when my children were younger, my wife wanted our children to get to know their cousins. That didn't last long because the hood cousins started teasing my children about the way they speak and how they carried themselves. One of my sons will be graduating from high school soon, and my wife has uh, a party plan for him. She wants to invite her entire family to the party that's in our community center in our neighborhood. I have politely reminded her how much of a fiasco it might be, but she is dead set on having her family included. I can already imagine a dice game jumping off by the pool if her uncle comes. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I need to put my foot down and set some ground rules. Stephen Shirley, how can I make this party work? Wow, well first, first, first. No alcohol. I have to say that. No alcohol. Because that one that's when the stuff jumps off. No alcohol, okay? None. Don't have any. They're going to be mad. But uh, you can't have any alcohol because they get that in them, and it's just no telling. Uh, you might want to have some uh, security around, some plain clothes security. You know, let them mingle through the crowd and everything. Um, because, you know, that's in case something does go down. Uh, you, you know, in the meantime, though, I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. You gave us a lot of information in your letter, you know, about you graduating from college. You and your wife have been together for 20 years. She's a great woman. You fell in love with her. Uh, your kids are great. Uh, their hood cousins make fun of them and everything. I just say, in the meantime, this is a teenage party. You know, remind people of that. So it, it should be okay because it's for the teenagers as long as the grown folks don't act a fool. Uh, the, the adults just have to behave. You love your wife. You said that. You love your wife. You fell in love with her, and you don't want to offend her. So please, please be mindful of that, you know, that these are her folks. She wants them to be included. She loves them, and really, she wants them there. So, I, I mean, hood or not, ghetto or not, as you call it, they're going to they're gonna be there because this is what the wife that you love wants. So no alcohol and a little bit of security might help you. Steve? Well, how many minutes I got here before I get started on this? I just wanted to say that I completely and totally 
disagree, disagree. with everything Shirley <laughs> said. <laughs> Your damn children need these people. <laughs> yes, they do. Nobody give a damn. Both my parents earn college degrees. My yeah. mom and daddy ain't ever. Ain't, my daddy ain't even finished elementary school. My mama got a high school diploma. That's it. Ain't none of my brothers and sisters been in no college. That's it. I went flunked right out. I got a college degree as well. I've been married over 20 years. Well, everybody don't make it 20 years. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray for you, partner. Are you bitter, Steve? You no, like I'm it. just going to tell him what, because, he, you know, he think he's somebody. Yeah. You got these two teenagers. They well-mannered and really smart kids. They book smart. They ass ain't street smart. Stupid ass need to get with these cuz and show them how to handle themselves out there in life. You got a family that's got five mobile parks down the street from each other, all of them in trailer home. He need to know these people. What? Because something could pop off. You needs them people. Now you mad and stuff. You don't want them around there, for lack of better term, they ghetto. Everybody on this morning show from damn ghetto. It's a lot of good in the hood. But you think, because you got this little degree, oh, you think your ass is somebody and you special. <laughs> well, you ain't. You're mad at him. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. And I'm going to tell you why when we come back. <laughs> hell right. yeah. Send him here because he got a little punk ass degree. <laughs> you know All right, listen, that? Steve, hang on to that. So we'll have part what? two of your, of your response <laughs> coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, her family is ghetto. She doesn't know it. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. There's a reason why I recommend American Financing over all other mortgage lenders out there. And it's because I know they're going to get you in a great deal. Whether you're looking at a lower rate, shorter term, access to cash, they can help and may get you up to $1,000 in monthly savings. Take advantage of a free mortgage review today by calling 800-795-1210 or visit AmericanFinancing.net, NMLS 182334, NMLS, ConsumerAccess.org. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter, which you are so mad about. Uh, it's the subject, her family Hell is yeah. ghetto, and she doesn't know I'm it. All in here, tell me, so damn what? <laughs> Most ghetto people don't know they ghetto because they from the ghetto. That's just where They're they ghetto. from. That's just where they live. Now, you sitting up in here because both your parents got college degrees, work hard. You and your siblings, you married, 20 great woman, two teenagers, you both y'all got degrees, you met in college. <laughs> but you can't stand her family. Well, her family probably can't stand you either. Your bougie ass coming over. See, <laughs> there, there are a lot of, they lack for a better term. Yeah, here come his snobby ass sitting up in here. <laughs> You don't like nothing they do down there. So I'm finna tell you about him. I must admit that as the kids grew up, I limited their access to my wife's side of the family, but I had to be careful not to fit them. These people are hood, they they have a cookout for everything. See, you think your kids is well-mannered and smart kids, but they don't got no street smarts. You know how many stupid ass book smart people I know? (laughs) Bill Gates ain't got a college degree. Mark Zuckerberg ain't got a college degree. Hold on, let me show you something. Let's get it real dumb. We talking about college degree. Tommy got a college degree. Oh, oh man. I oh, don't wow. have a college degree. That now, who, which home. one of us you want your kids to be? That brings it home, Steve. Yeah. You want your kid. Tommy got a college degree. I ain't. Who you want your kids to be? Probably neither one of us, but if you had to pick one, <laughs> would you pick his stupid ass? That's all I'm asking you. Got a college degree, ain't got a damn brain in his skull. So much for your little damn college degree. They have a cookout for every occasion. They live on the same street in five or six mobile homes. They always down to party, play cards, and drink. Damn it, what's wrong with that? You got to do something. We've been working all week. 
We got to have some fun. We ain't got a whole lot of money, so we gonna play cards. That's what's the matter with your punk ass kids. They don't know how to play spades. They can't play dead whist. They don't know how to. Uh, they don't play tongue. They don't shoot dice. You know, punk ass kids gonna go off to college. They ain't gonna know a damn thing. He gonna get their ass hustle. They gonna go in Times Square. Somebody gonna have a three card Motley game set up. Take all your little ignorant ass kids' money. Somebody gonna have a shell game set up. Take all your kids' money. Oh, yeah, they go, but they're going to go visit. Everybody go to Times Square. Your little kid's going to come back broke. The kid's always a part of the festivities. Your kids probably need to learn how to play tongue. How the hell you grow up and don't know how to play tongue? You can't shoot no damn pool. My wife want our children to get they know they cousins because your wife is right because she know you ain't taught them a damn thing. And set up here and taught them all that book knowledge and all that. And they told me they're just getting their ass whipped every time they go to the playground. He did not say that. <laughs> well, I'm telling you what it sounds. This is what I'm reading in the letter. I'm reading all this in the letter. Your wife want them to know they cousins because they damn daddy soft. They didn't last long because the hood cousins, they want them to come over and could start teasing your children about the way they speak and how they carry themselves. It ain't the last time they're going to hear this. The hood cousins was getting them ready for life. Why are you mad? That's what hood because cousins do. they sitting up in here and not, not, not honoring the value of these hood cousins. It's good in the hood. You need to let yeah. these hood tease your kids about the way they speak. They probably speak real proper, just like your ass. One of my sons be graduating from high school. My wife got a party planned. She want to invite her entire party to the pub our family to the party that's in our community center in our neighborhood oh oh i see you live in a complex that's got a community center right oh now you gonna oh you scared the hood people gonna come over there start swimming with all their clothes on and stuff like that <laughs> gonna bring a grill out there because you know we travel with Some grills 40. in our car i had a grill in my car till i was 34 years old Sorry what? to mention. Yeah, kept a grill in my car. Charcoal, lighter fluid, too, and a fishing rod. What? Hell yeah. I never, <laughs> hey, never know when I run across the lake. I need something to eat. I was homeless. I ain't no time to deal with this punk ass letter. And he was sitting up in here. I so, politely remind her how much a fiasco it'll be if I invite them people over there. But she dead set on having her family included. I can imagine a dice game jumping off by the pool if their uncle come. Who don't like to shoot dice? <laughs> oh, hell no. I know you ain't say we can't shoot game. dice. Wait a How minute. the hell we can't like shoot dice? <laughs> we at the swimming pool. Steve, can I Black people don't swim. So what uh, is it they going to do? They, they, your uncle can't swim. He got some dice. We standing Steve. around. We ain't doing it. You hold on, Shirley. We shooting dice. <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful. I need to put my foot down. You you can kick the dice. Put your foot down. If they roll, Fade. you kick it for a hit point. Yeah. You can kick the dice. Yeah. Get a rethrow. Fade. I need what to make some ground rules. Why can I make this party work? Don't your ass don't go. <laughs> now what you want to ask me, Shirley? <laughs> so you're rolling around with a fishing pole because you get hungry. So you'll go get some fish and then catch it and bring it back and cook it on the grill that's in your car. No, I take it up to the rest area. Because they got them cast iron grills already dug into the ground. We threw parties. My brother my brother still got card parties at his house. When my oldest brother died, yeah. we stopped for six months because we was mourning, but we back now. <laughs> uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter. Yeah, Steve Harvey FM damn letter. on Instagram and Facebook. Coming up in 46 minutes after the hour. That's why the majority mm. of my friends ain't got no damn college. Okay, uh, we'll be back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. What's the biggest lie you ever told? Tommy started off. My oldest son, when uh -huh. he was younger, he wanted to go to PG-13 movies. I always knew it was going to be something that he didn't need to see. Uh -huh. So he didn't know, but I would tell him, hey, do you know what PG-13 means? He's like, no. I say, that means only 13 people can go in the movie. So when I when we would get there, I say it's already twelve people in there. We can't go in there. It's too late. And he would be like, "Wow, we don't never get here in time enough to see any PG thirteen movies." 
we're going to have to go see a G movie. We're going to go see a G movie. We, we be all up in Lion King. We not going to see <laughs> PG. Your mama ain't finna be mad at me. PG-13 is what it is. All right, come on, Junior. That's what cute. you got? What's the biggest uh, lie you ever told? I need to make sure that my mama ain't listening. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, Jeez. man. Uh-huh. So, you know, Miss Alicia well, listens. I, uh, I was at football 16 years old. Uh-huh. And my mama let me take her truck to practice. And, you know, after practice, my boy get in the truck. We driving back. I took my mama a brand new blazer uh-huh. and backed it and got it stuck on the side and did it the whole left side on a school bus. Ah, oh, my boy said, man, I can't let you go back home with the truth. Uh-huh. You got to say that <laughs> bus backed into you. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Boy, he said, you yeah. can't walk in. Your mama uh-huh. brand. He got this tag still on it. It ain't no license plate. Oh. Man, I walked in and mama said, what happened to that truck? And my boy just went to talking. We was just buttoning up our seatbelts. Next thing you know, a school bus hit us. Oh. My mama bought that for about two months. Uh-huh. She said, That's why a you case. Ain't, she said, why you ain't getting no case? Uh-huh, right. I got the <laughs> biggest that. ass whooping I had ever <laughs> received at 16. I, could, I was fast after that. Yeah. Oh, I was really fast. <laughs> All oh, right, man. come on, Steve. <laughs> The biggest lie home. you've ever told. Last one. What you got? So many. I, uh, you know, he said, I have an endless pool to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, at ball my daddy's station wagon uh-huh. one time. I was taking this girl uh, mm-hmm. out on a date in my church choir. But I wanted to be with her in the car. And so what I did was I stopped at the drugstore and bought some Pond's cold cream. That was a trick me and the fellas used to use back in the day. You put Pond's cold cream on the windows, it make it, you know, you can't see in the window. Uh-huh. And uh, I put the Pond's cold cream on, on the windows uh-huh. before I got down mm-hmm. there to pick her up. And when I went and picked her up and she came and got in the car, I'm in the station wagon. And I backed out, I couldn't see a damn thing. And I hit my daddy's uh, fender on the fence and tore the headlight out. Can't get cream off no window, boy. What? Yeah, yeah, you can get. Why would you, you put yeah, the cream no, on? No, I mean, you can get Pond's cold cream off the window. You can't get it out the crack where the window meets the post. That's oh. what you can't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's what got you. All right, thank you guys. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so guys, here's a question for you: Do you have a hiding place in your home to just have a few minutes alone? You know, I mean, everybody should have some place, some little getaway place that they can have some me time. For instance, some women like to have what they call a she shed or a small room that they can read in or just chill in. I, I, You know what? I love the bathroom. Men usually go into the garage or, or their man cave or the basement or someplace. Uh, do you take an extended break in your home? hiding place do you do it every day is the question or uh, does your family know not to disturb you when you're in your favorite room or your hiding place uh come on steve i know you take time for yourself yeah You've i do always yeah. done that yeah, yeah i go i go to san diego <laughs> you leave the house yeah get the <laughs> hell out can't follow me down now <laughs> damn grandkids know how to use the elevator and everything i'll be damn i'm going to san diego <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful there. <laughs> I don't care if it is. It's just, they not there. <laughs> Shirley, you got one? Yeah, I love, I, I will be in my bathroom for hours. Okay. Hours. Hours in the bathroom. In the bath because I have a TV in there, and, you know, I do my makeup, you know, yeah. I, I don't mean the, the water you don't, closet. You don't mean the toilet. No, no, no. Oh, no I don't I'll mean that. I spend most of my time. I will spend most of my time in the bathroom. No, 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 not there. I just On mean the in the outer part. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a separate yeah. With room. the bathroom. I got my TV right in front of the toilet and a computer. <laughs> oh, uh-uh. Now, that's how you go. Yeah. From now yeah. on, that's how you I go. I don't miss nothing because when I'm watching a game, I just get up and go on in the bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's on but the yeah. wall right in front of you. That's yeah. fly. Oh. I ain't done that one. Up a little high where you can keep your head up. You don't want to look evil. <laughs> keep, keep your head up. Your digestive tract is more open. Uh, <laughs> wow. Just slightly uh, above our level. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Tommy? I'm in my theater. Oh, uh-huh. I can get away from in the theater. Oh, did you hear that rich ass yeah, statement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you hear that, nice, Junior? Nice, yeah. in the now, show. you said a rich ass statement, yeah, and yeah. I ain't say nothing. That's you nice. said my kids on, my, my grandbaby's on the elevator. I ain't say nothing about your elevator in your house. See, I, didn't I ain't say even paid that no attention. I know you did. I was saying I was going to, because uh, I can't go up or down. 
Go ahead, T. You got a V8 in there? Oh, Rove's in this show, too. I oh. thought I had it limited. Stop. Like, okay. Stop. All right, well. How hey, y'all Junior? bypass his elevator on my theater? Hey, Junior. Huh? Which one of your rooms in your house is your theater? Yeah, let's hear from the poet. Oh. Oh, I don't have none. <laughs> a theater? What I had to do is take some some um, drapes and put them on the side of the TV <laughs> and make my ass a theater. <laughs> With the Just, remote. When I'm promoting it, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make a theater. Hold on, y'all. Come out the kitchen. Them, them drapes going to catch you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make a theater. I know. Mm-hmm. That boy, that ball. Boy, that chateau must be nice. I ain't been yeah, yet, though. Yeah, me, I go to my theater. What? Yeah. Early. The what? The what? The what? Nothing. I can't say nothing. How many seats in the theater? Tommy? I'm not telling. There's so you. many they can't find him in there, John. Shut <laughs> up, Steve. <laughs> Woo! Where's Daddy at in this here theater, girl? Go down front, see if he down now. I said, go down to the theater. I better take my head down to AMC. Go look in the balcony, see if he up there. <laughs> Daddy. Uh. Uh, Man, don't you ask me where I go to get away. That's all I said. Man. <sighs> well, Tell the me. Lord is still blessing He's blessing you, yes, man. I yes, didn't yes, even yes, know yes, you yes, had yes. a theater, mm-hmm. Tom. He's I'm sitting up here talking to you like you ain't had one. I got to change how I talk to you. <laughs> how, how were you talking to him at first? Like he ain't had no theater. Uh-huh. <laughs> now he got a theater. I got to change how I talk to him. Man, Mr. Nephew now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Nephew, what time you go down to the theater? <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so, Steve, in case you don't make it to San Diego, what what room in your home do you go to? Where do you go uh, in your house? I go all the way down to the basement. Uh-huh. What's down there, though? Down there, just a little man cave I got. Oh, oh okay. All right, Big Steve. Uh, cool. <laughs> all right, coming up, uh, more of today's Good trending job. stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And uh, we'll be back in 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. Loud. We'll be in the thin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, scientists are working to control a non-hormonal birth control pill for men. All right. For men now. And it has been proven successful in lab trials on mice. The drug was 99 percent effective at presenting pregnancy in mice and has no apparent side effects, according to the research presented at the annual meeting of the American Chemical Society. After a year of testing with human males, the drug could soon be the first effective form of both birth control for men besides condoms or getting a vasectomy. Mm. So, guys, here's the question. Well, what do you think? Time. And would you Let's take the pill? Let me say this already. About would, would you take I'm not it? saying what? I wouldn't take the pill or nothing, but so far... <laughs> All these mm-hmm. tests have been done on mice. There's nothing similar about me and a mouse. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> nothing. <laughs> my reproductive glands is the size of a mouse. <laughs> so you wouldn't take the pill. It's a no for you. Well, I'm just saying I don't know what they done put in this mice. You heard them. Probably. But I'm going to need probably 400 times the dosage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway. So, Jay, I know. If they make it, if they make Jay, it taste like it? chicken, I'm in. <laughs> all right, Jay. All they can feel. Jay loves chicken. Jay, Jay loves chicken. <laughs> Jay, a chicken pill. Them. We are at the age where it don't matter. I don't even give a <laughs> damn right now. Man. I can take but it or not. Can make babies. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up in 33 minutes after the hour. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Truth be told. Come on, Junior. Truth be told. I don't know who these people are and where they come from. But on Saturday, yeah. why is you calling any human being before 8 o'clock? <laughs> why? <laughs> Who the hell? What do we have to talk about <laughs> at 7.15 a.m.? Oh. There's nothing I want to talk. Like, my boy called me at 7.15 a.m. Talking about what you doing. Dog is sad. I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm trying day. to do. But here's the thing about it is, like he said, dog, did you see? I, was, I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> it's 7.15. I love it. Yo, these people need to go. I'm trying to just go jump off in traffic. The phone shouldn't even be allowed no. to work but before until after 8. 
have to ten. It, it won't even ring. Good shit. But I'm just, I'm just saying, what made you get up? Pick your phone up and say, damn it, you know who I ain't called? <laughs> Let me call him right now. <laughs> but what? Junior. At what time, Junior? At 715. <laughs> First of all, I ain't formulated a thought. <laughs> okay, and then you another grown man talking to another grown man as I lay in bed. This ain't really, this is not comfortable. <laughs> I'm not comfortable. When you heard me say, hello, hello. You go on the phone, dog. Guess what? <laughs> what? What? At seven fifteen? What? Why am I guessing? Why are you answering? Dog, I ain't got no shirt on right now. Why you wanna wake up and guess? <laughs> dog, I ain't got no shirt on. You sleep naked? Dog, what? Shirt? I'm just asking. I, however, I sleep. It ain't none of your business. Seven fifteen. I'm just I'm not comfortable with the conversation. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay. Y'all should okay. just 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 find something else to do. Don't call people no more. Okay. That's all I just want to say. What's the earliest you can take? 1030. 1030. But 7.15 on the set. Yeah, 1030. I want to get up, have my coffee, uh -huh. enjoy my morning. Uh -huh. But, dog, you uh -huh. call me at 715, I ain't got no shirt on. You talking about guess what? <laughs> this, what? This is uncomfortable, huh? It's uncomfortable. <laughs> you laying horizontal <laughs> talking to another man. Uh, at 715? That don't even feel right. At 715. Right. <laughs> dog, I got, dog I, got, I got one leg in the bed, one leg out the bed. <laughs> guess what? That's all I want to say. Just stop oh, calling right. me. Truth be told. Okay. 1030. 1030. <laughs> Yeah, 10.30. I that's wish you were early. Yeah, we should call him. On Saturday. Saturday. Don't call him. He'll be upset. Wow. Yeah. 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 Right. And the person I'm talking about is Jay. <laughs> Just want y'all to wow. know. Oh, it's you, Jay? Wow. You know what? Just want y'all to know. I thought we agreed not to bring that up. So we agreed to agree. <laughs> the same time we agree, agreed that you would not. Both of y'all. Both of y'all. Let me tell you something. What, Steve? Come on. Tommy, I think you agree with me. Both of y'all. Both of y'all sick ass need some women in your life. <laughs> Y'all need some ladies. Y'all need something man. to do. Y'all ain't got nothing for y'all waking up by y'all. Sam, put your shirt on, Junior. <laughs> Why is he on the phone? Y'all issues ain't even real issues. <laughs> Call me the 1015, Jay. <laughs> Joe, I mean that. I huh? thought we agreed not to talk about it. Damn. <laughs> uh. All right, Steve, coming up, closing remarks right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are, last break of the day on this Monday. It's been a good day. We've had some fun today. Uh, thank you. And uh, now it's time for you to take us home, get back to work with some closing remarks. They right up under that pyramid. They there. And you know what they do? They're the support system for you. And you find that in people all the time. But, man, if you're not careful, if you're not really, really careful, and you're not monitoring people along the way, it's not you that changes, they change. Their perception of you changes. So once their perception of you changes, their attitude towards you changes. I can't count the people, man. I can't count the people in my life, man, who for one reason or another felt like it should have been them. Or for one reason or another, they just got jealous of you because of what you had. I was talking to Jamie Foxx at the... Uh, at this party the other night. And Jamie Foxx, I showed him something that he had posted on Instagram. He said, wow, man, I'm glad that meant something to you. And what he posted was, some people only hate you because of the way other people love you. Y'all remember that. Some people only hate you because of the way other people love you. Do you know that that's simply all it takes for some people to hate you? You ain't got to have done nothing to them. But people get sick of your success. People get tired of you. How God always blessing you. How you always, why they get another car from? Why they keep getting a promotion? What they doing over there? They always bragging about they baby did this, they baby did that. No, 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 no. Some people only hate you because of the way other people love you. So you got to constantly monitor people in your life, man. Because like I said, as you get more and more successful, it's not you who changes. It's the people's perception of you who changes. And if they can't make the adjustment, then you have to make the adjustment. You got to get rid of people who don't mean you well. You got to get rid of people who are non-supportive. You got to get rid of the people that's always bad news. 
you got to get rid of the people that you always got to help, but they ain't got no help for you. Am I talking to you and are you listening? You yep. can't help everybody. Drop, Drop it. it. That's how you do it, boy. For 330 million, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't helping nobody with 300 million. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> we love Y'all you. Y'all have a great weekend. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs>